I was introduced to the video game realm a tad later than most people. For most, if not all my, of my early childhood, I was isolated from other kids. I had next to no social interactions. My days were spent in a prison-like school, and my nights rotted away with mind-numbing TV. Life was dull and boring, and all I had were my stuffed animals and cheap plastic toys to talk to. That's when I got a GameCube. It was the Christmas of 2003, I believe. I was overjoyed at having my own video game station. It came with the, it came with the game Super Mario Sunshine, Pac-Man World 2, and Pokemon Channel. Each of those games still hold a sp still hold a special place in my heart today. As soon as the GameCube was set up and ready to go, I began playing it immediately. I pl the first game I played was Super Mario Sunshine. This game is what got me hooked onto the Mario series. After playing it for hours straight, and finally finding a level I just couldn't get past, I turned to Pac-Man World 2. <laughs> Amazingly enough, I got stuck on level 2, infuriated that I couldn't find the way out even though the answer was literally right in front of my eyes, I quit and started playing my first Pokemon game ever, Pokemon Channel. As soon as I turned the game on, I knew this game was going to be different from the other two. It didn't take long for me to fall in love with the game. When the time came for me to name my Pikachu, I unwittingly named him Brever, short for brother. What compelled me to give him such a strange name that didn't even sound like a shortened version of brother, I'll never know. But regardless, I still enjoyed playing. There is no way for me to describe the love I felt toward this game. It was everything that I had ever dreamed of. In this game, I had a friend that I could play with. It took place in the Pokemon world too, which I had already loved before I got into Pokemon Channel. I could watch TV with Brever, go fishing with him, play tic-tac-toe with him, talk to other Pokemon with him, grow a garden with him, build a snowman with him, explore ancient ruins with him, play musicals with him, sit around campfires and tell stories with him, gaze at the stars with him. All the things I got I never got to experience in real life, I was able to do in this virtual world with Brever, the best friend I never had. I was obviously over addicted to the game, but I had nothing else to use up my time with, so instead I put it all into this game. Oblivious to all things happening in the real world, I preferred to live out my life in this Pokemon fantasy with my best friend Brever. Brever seemed like more than just a virtual animated 3D model forced to do his actions based on the programming of the game. He almost seemed real to me. If I was ever sad one day, he would appear to look and act depressed too. If I was angry, he would show and express my rage during that play of the game too. If I ever needed something to cheer me up, he would act silly and leap at me and do other idiotic things too. Later on, when I grew older and wiser, I just assumed that all these strange events never really happened, and when I was younger I just simply imagined it, but it was still fun to pretend he was real. As the years went past, I got more games. I had acquired a Game Boy game, which along with it came more Pokemon games where I could have more than just a single Pikachu. My interest also floated to different series like Mario and Sonic. After playing Pokemon Channel so many times and doing the same things over and over again, it started to get a bit boring. I started playing it less and less and other games more and more, but I still gave Pokemon Channel a play every now and then. Eventually I changed schools and my whole life was changed. I was moved from a private Christian school to a public school and my eyes were open to reality. I started to learn new things about real life which helped me enjoy it more. People weren't mean and cruel to me, they would greet me when I passed them in the halls. I discovered that I could do more than just play video games. I could draw, there were thousands of songs I could listen to, and my grades started rising dramatically. The best part of it all was that I got a new friend, a real friend, one who was flesh and blood. She was funny and helped me get used to the school and was someone I could talk to beside my parents. We both had the same immature, mock everything in every possible way kind of minds. I finally had a best friend. 
While I started to grow in both mind and body, Pokemon Channel was slowly forgotten. I moved on to greater and better games. Almost all the things I could do in the game I was now able to do in real life. Brever had been replaced by my real best friend. He and the game had become obsolete, forgotten on a dusty shelf in a dark corner of the room. For the next couple of years, life was golden. Each day I would learn something new and I had a ton of fun with my best friend. I made a few other friends too, but no one could top my best friend. Every now and then I'd get a new game, get some money, go do something with my best friend, draw something, listen to music. I never wished for anything more. Good things never last. Eventually, I had to move. I protested and threw a fit, but to no avail. Trying to stop the tears from falling down my face, I told my best friend goodbye on my last day at, at school. For the next few nights, I cried myself to sleep at my new house, but I eventually stopped. Having one of my main reasons to live in life ripped away from me tore a hole in my heart that will never be completely healed, but the pain eventually became less and less. I still had contact with my best friend though. We both had YouTube accounts we would talk to each other over the internet. We'd call each other and have sleepovers and sometimes see a movie together as well. But it still hurt not to have her at school anymore. I made some new friends at my school, even more than at my old school in fact, but none of them were as funny as my best friend. None of them could replace her. Just when I thought I could get used to this lifestyle, one of the most dreadful things happened. For her sake, I won't tell you what my friend did, but she did something horrible and my mom refused to let me speak to or ever see her again. My heart was utterly smashed into thousands of pieces. I felt like I had nothing left to live for. My best and what felt like my only friend was now gone from me forever. I now sucked back into my old habits playing video games and isolating myself from the rest of the world. I didn't like to go anymore. I refused to leave my room except to go to school, eat, use the restroom, and visit my dad every other weekend. Now that my best friend had been snatched away from me and that, and that I didn't do anything in real life anymore, I needed something to replace them. Searching through my ancient shelf of old games, I pulled out Pokemon Channel. I brushed the dust off the cover. I felt like it had been an eternity since I gazed upon the game. I inserted the game disc into the GameCube, grabbed my controller, and waited to greet my old virtual friend Brever. A tear fell down my cheek as memories flooded back while I stared at the title screen. After a moment of soaking in old nostalgia, I selected continue. I eagerly selected yes when the information appeared of my currently saved game asking if it was correct. As the transition Pokeballs rolled across the screen, I just couldn't wait to see Brother again. When the transition was over, I appeared to be in my room. The normal cutscene where Pikachu was asleep on top of the shelf and wakes up didn't play, but at the moment, I had, comp I had almost completely forgotten about that. The only thing on my mind was finding Brother. As I searched around the room, though, he wasn't anywhere in sight. Suddenly, though, the deli bird that delivers the goods you buy from the shop and Squirtle channel was at the door. I smiled warmly at the sight. I remembered I bought something from that channel almost every day when I was younger. I thought I must have bought something the last time I played and, and completely forgot about it. Curious about what was in the door, I eagerly headed for it. Pika. The deep moaning sound stopped me before I could reach the door. I turned the screen and saw Brever climbing out from under the bed. He looked beat up and depressed. I'd never seen him climb out from, from under the bed before, except for when he's searching for the Pokemon Mini in the beginning of the game. When he turned and saw me, his when he turned and saw me, a shocked expression came over his face, like it like it normally should. Hey brother, it's me, I whispered even though I knew he couldn't hear me. Instead of a joyous look, however, he acquired an, an infuriating glare on his face. I was a bit confused as to why he was angry, but before I could ponder at the subject, the deli bird called again from the door. 
Banishing the whole incident from my thoughts, I turned and opened the door. I was comforted when the deli bird handed over the box, and Brewer smiled and waved as deli bird flew off. A package arrived with merchandise from Shop and Squirtle. I quickly pressed A as that message appeared. I wondered what was inside as Brewer leaned in the box and took out the items. You got a Pikachu TVZ. The TV has been displayed. A menacing and quite gruesome looking Pikachu TV was set up in replacement of my own Voltorb TV. It looked like a Pikachu head facing toward you with its jaws wide open. Its mouth was the TV screen. Inside its mouth was a TV screen with its fangs hanging over the top and bottom. It looked like the skin was tearing and ripping apart at places, almost like the screen was too large for its mouth. I was a bit shocked at how scary it looked. You got red wallpaper, Z. The wallpaper has been displayed. I gasped when the wallpaper was up. It was dark red, like dried blood. Pikachus with sick twisted smiles were repeated all across it. They were each bright red, like freshly drawn blood. I was beginning to worry. You got a Pikachu doll, Z. The doll has been displayed. I winced with fear when I saw the morbid Pikachu placed on top of one of the shelves. It had the same eerie grin as the Pikachus on the wallpaper, except with long fangs. Its eyes were small, ruby red, and dilated. The tip of its tail curved inward like a hook, and it had sharp looking claws. Numerous dried streaks of blood ran the length of its body. The same sequence had happened over and over, until the entire room was filled with the disturbing Pikachu dolls. They replaced all of the other dolls. Brever got up and looked around the room. He nodded in satisfaction and walked toward the TV. I sat in my chair, struck with fear. Even though it had been years since I played the game, I knew these items were never in it. Pika. Pika. A threatening and commanding call came from Brever. He was standing at the TV giving me a glare. I knew he wanted me to go over there. I walked, onto the TV. I walked over to the TV and turned it on. It opened to the report channel like normal, but to my horror, the screen like it had blood dripping down it. I changed the channels and they all looked that way. I quickly opened up my diary, which in this game was the start menu, and clicked on the TV's tab. I chose my Voltorb TV, but as soon as I did, the diary closed without me pressing B. Brepper was staring at me with a threatening glare and shook his head disapprovingly. Brever turned back to the TV and changed it to the fortune channel. This channel seemed normal, except for the blood dripping down the screen. Choose your cookie. The words drifted by the bottom of the screen. I chose the top one like I always do. The cookie floated down into Chansey's hands and cracked open. Do you really want to know your fortune? The words appeared on the screen. I froze with fear. Something about that fortune seemed eerie. It appeared that the Chansey on screen was laughing. Brever changed the channel again. He changed it to the relaxation channel. Instead of Fluffy Mareep, however, what greeted me were those morbid Pikachus that looked just like the dolls jumping over the fence. I quickly pressed B and went back to the center of the room. Normally, Brever would turn around and motion for me to come back and watch it with him, but this time, he didn't seem to care. I walked over to my old painting, a beautifully colored Jirachi surrounded by a cute Pikachu border hung against the wall. I sighed with relief. At least one thing was still normal. I took a few moments to stare at the old painting, mostly because I just didn't want to look at the gruesome wallpaper or horrifying dolls. Brever is looking at the painting too. Chills went through my spine as that message appeared, even though it was normal for your Pikachu to stare at your painting with you. I pressed B and sure enough, Brever was standing in front of the painting. It seemed like he had a sad expression, like he was remembering long lost memories. He turned to me, still with the same depressed expression. He looked like he was about to cry. I felt sorry and wished there was something I could do to cheer him up. Brever walked up to me and asked me a question, which is normal for your Pikachu to ask you a question every now and then. But my blood ran cold. What, 
he asked what he did. Brever wants to know if you still love him. It had an O for yes and an X for no option. Brever had never asked that before. I immediately clicked O. He smiled and then bent over laughing. I was a bit confused as to why he was having a laughing fit. When he was done laughing, he looked back up at me with an evil smile. A message appeared at the top of the screen. <laughs> Brever knows when you're lying. He turned back to watch he turned back to watch the TV. By this point, I didn't know what to do anymore. I knew for sure that all this wasn't supposed to be happening. I thought that maybe if I restarted my GameCube, everything would go back to normal. I got up and reached for the restart button, but when I pressed it, nothing happened. I pressed it a second time and still nothing. The game cannot be reset right now. The message appeared on the screen. My heart stopped beating for a second. After staring dumbly at the screen for what seemed like a solid minute, I sat back down and decided, might as well see where this goes. I just looked around the room for about another minute. Other than the wallpaper, dolls, and TV, everything else seemed to be the same. I tried to smile while looking at the old Pokemon mini and posters, but I couldn't bring myself to. The normally cute and cheerful music seemed to make the room more disturbing. It looked as if all the morbid dolls had their eyes focused on me, like they were about to reach out and grab me and slowly tear apart and devour my flesh. Brever wants to go outside. The message appeared on the top of the screen. Before I could do anything though, Brever went outside and the game forced, forced me to follow him. My breath caught in my throat when I went outside. The sky was blood red, with even darker clouds swirling in it. Strewn all across the lawn were dead Pokemon corpses. I couldn't tell what many of them were, as most of their limbs were torn off, their faces were shredded, and entrails were everywhere. I felt sick, like I was about to throw up. Brever circled around them, then turned to me and gave me an evil grin. He walked up to me and asked a question. Brever wants to know if you like what he's done to the place. I immediately clicked X. His sick grin had deepened even more. He walked over to a skiddy and, and threw it at me. Its body parts broke off and flew everywhere as it bounced off the screen. After many agonizing minutes of being forced to watch Brever toy with the dead body parts, he walked over to the garden. When we stepped into the garden, two plants were fully grown. Instead of fruits, however, they had grown Pikachu heads. Brother plucked one and slowly started to eat it. My lunch started to rise back up my throat, but I forced it down. I tried to turn away from the gruesome sight, but something had glued my eyes to the screen. After taking his time, Brother walked over and ate the other head. Once he was done, he cast me a wicked smile and leaped out of the garden. Again, I was forced to follow him. Brever was apparently done messing around outside and went straight inside. I was hoping he was done and we would just stay inside. I much now I now much preferred the morbid dolls over the body parts. But he wasn't done showing me the world he had created yet. Almost as soon as we went inside, Brever went immediately to the back door. Guess who was forced to follow yet again? When we went outside, there weren't any more corpses, much to my relief, but the sky was still an ominous blood red. When I tried to go back inside, he wouldn't let me. Brever would just turn the camera and give a disapproving shake of his head, so I was forced to stand there. The Viridian Forest bus pulled up and Brever walked up to it without me even clicking on it. The transition played normally, the bus riding over the map to the Viridian Forest, but when we got there, the whole forest was on fire. Dead Pokemon were lying everywhere as the trees wildly burned, their bodies charred black by the flames. Brever seemed unaffected by the blazing fire. He skipped over to the patch of mushrooms that looked like they were bleeding. Brever ate one without asking for permission and gave a satisfied nod when he was done. 
He then ran over to the bell that starts the Pokemon concert. Instead of Brever being surrounded by Clefairies, he was surrounded by those morbid Pikachu plushies. Using the bells, they played the most haunting and blood-chilling tune I had ever heard. I was awestruck. It sounded so beautiful, yet so horrifying. It was high-pitched and made my ears ache, but I was in a trance and couldn't think to turn the volume down. After what seemed like years, the, the play was finally over. Glancing around, Brever seemed satisfied with the burning forest and headed back toward the bus. Again, I was forced to wait outside the house while I awaited the next horrors Brever would inflict upon my eyes. I thought he would want to take the Mount Snowfall bus, but apparently he had other ideas. He just let that bus pass, pass on by. Instead, he decided to take the bus to Cobalt Beach next. Same simple transition, same horrifying scene. The beach was littered with pieces of corpses of the Pokemon you would normally find roaming around there. The ocean looked like blood, and floating in it were more body parts from the dead Pokemon. It then became apparent to me that Brever didn't really like other Pokemon. We then played a game of tic-tac-toe. Instead of rocks, however, we used internal organs for pieces. Brever beat me by a long shot, although I couldn't think straight since I was using entrails as X's and O's while being surrounded by dead corpses. He laughed when he beat me, like this was all normal and supposed to be happening. Then for a brief moment, a look of regret and sadness swept over his face. I felt a longing to reach out and comfort him, so I used the sea stick to pet him, but as soon as the cursor touched him, his normal infuriated and demented look came back. He ran off over to the fishing area, with a little person called me unwillingly, fo unwillingly following behind. Brever stood on his rock and threw out his fishing line into the blood ocean, waiting for a bite. I did nothing, for there was nothing I could do. He turned and gave me a menacing glare, like I was supposed to be helping him. That's when I remembered I had to give him the bait. I clicked on the jar labeled bait. But instead of a chocolate glazed donut, I got a rotting brain. It was falling apart, it was covered in a greenish brown mold, yet it was still throbbing. I quickly tossed it into the ocean. Shortly afterwards, Brever cut something on his line. With a great yank, the creature came flying out of the ocean. I swear to God, this creature shall forever haunt my dreams. It looked like an oversized, dark purple Magikarp, but it was foaming at the mouth while a green, acidic blood poured out from numerous gashes all along its body. Multiple organs clung to the many spikes sticking out from it. Parts of its scales had been scraped away underneath, exposing muscle and parts of the muscle, and some parts of the muscle looked like they had been eaten, leaving bones sticking out. It flopped around and gasped for air while disturbing, gurgling sounds emitted from its mouth. I screamed when I saw the vile creature. Brever turned to me as if he had heard me. He slowly climbed down from the rock, taking as much time as possible to let that wretched creature suffer much more. Then, he started to eat that magic harp while it was still alive. I screamed again and covered my mouth as my eyes were forced to watch the gruesome sight. Once he was done with his meal, he turned back to me and smiled a happy, playful smile. I couldn't believe that this monster was once my close virtual friend that I looked forward to seeing every day after school. After that traumatizing event, Brever cheerfully skipped along down the beach back to the bus stop singing. His merriment made the situation that much more horrifying. While waiting for the Mount Snowfall bus, Brever stood in the middle of the walkway, staring at me. His face was blank and showed no signs of emotion. Even though I knew he couldn't hear me, I just had to know. Why? Why are you doing this? A tear started to fall down my face. Brever made this world to please you. My blood turned to ice when that message appeared at the top of the screen. Brever cast at me another sick, wicked grin that stretched from cheek to cheek. 
More tears started to sneak their way down my face. The Mount Snowfall bus had finally arrived. I don't know if I was happy at the sight, or petrified at the thought of facing another gruesome scene. It was the usual deal. Innocent transition, not so innocent sights. Frostbitten carcasses lay strewn out ungloriously across the frozen land, most of them half buried in snow. Surprisingly, there was no blood or entrails lying about. This area had a more sad atmosphere than morbid. Brother slowly walked over to where Kecleon and Jigglypuff would normally say, but since they were dead and buried under the snow, he took their place. Brother sang the most beautiful, yet saddest song I'd ever heard. His harmonious voice sounded like violins playing the most tear-jerking tear tune I'd ever heard. He had a depressed and sorrowful, yet focused expression while he sang the tune, which is just what the song sounded like. I couldn't control the tears that started flowing down my face while he sang. My poor emotional heart broke in two listening to the sorrow-drenched melody. After what seemed like an eternity, Brever finally finished. He then looked me in the eyes with the most sorrowful, depressed, and utterly hopeless expression I had ever seen. I longed so much to hold him in my arms and comfort him, but he quickly turned away and ran toward the second half of Mount Snowfall. We stood in front of the ruins of truth for many moments. Brever just stood dead still while staring at the ruins. Then he glanced at me, a deep meaningful look in his eyes, and ran inside. It was jet black in there, like it was supposed to be. He used a thunderbolt to light the electric flowers, which, were, which caused the entire ruins to light up. All along the walls, ceiling, and floors were many different words, written in blood. Help me. Why? I must die. Kill me. It's so cold. I'm so lonely. Where is she? Come back. Why can't I die? Brever walked over to the other side of the ruins where the true or false tablet stood. I was forced to click on it. Brever was abandoned by his best friend years ago to be replaced by a new best friend and was left to rot in this virtual world. I finally understood what all this meant. All those words written on the walls, they were from Brever. This was all my fault. I left him, my best friend, to die al alone. No, he couldn't even die if he wanted to. He was forced to drag out his miserable existence over the years. I didn't blame him for wanting revenge on me. I deserve this. I then slapped myself across the face. What was I thinking? Pokemon Channel was just a game. I wasn't supposed to devote my life to them. They were only meant to Im they were only meant to amuse and entertain the mind of a child. They they weren't real. I took a minute to ponder over my last statement. They weren't real. I thought about all the things Brever had done to traumatize me and get revenge for abandoning him for so long. Heck, this was all just too real. I selected O for true because it was. I admitted to abandoning Brever and leaving him to rot. Instead of the tablet sinking back into the ground, it glowed green as if in approval with me. The screen then slowly faded to black, except for Brever. He stood in the center of the screen with a tired, angry, yet sad expression. I didn't know what to think of him anymore. I hated him and really wished I could kill him, but I felt sorry and wanted with all my heart to help him make things better. Brever feels the same way about you. Those messages didn't shock me anymore. If anything, I was expecting it. After a few long moments of just staring at each other, I asked him one last question. What are you going to do with me now? Brever wants you to suffer the same way he did. He cast me one last wicked grin, the widest and most grotesque I had ever seen. 
and the screen soon cut to black. After a moment, the title screen had appeared. The continue button was gone. I sighed in relief that this horrifying reunion was over. I got up and was about to remove the disc from my GameCube before I looked back on the desk. On it was a Pikachu doll Z.